Greetings, special heads. Welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. Now I am trying something different here for this video. Just leave me feedback on it, of course. Uh, I am currently using, for this video at least, the, uh, the mic of my webcam. Um, and that is simply because at this point I think the background noise you're hearing, it, it comes from uh, either my processor or the cooling fan of my computer. And I can't really turn that off, can I? And since the the, uh, the external mic is, you know, quite a bit closer in, in height to the, to the computer uh, than the webcam is, because it's obviously on top of my mo monitor, um, that should maybe help a little bit. Uh, in any case, now, as far as the campaign that I had going on goes, uh, we... We failed in 1957, basically, we went bankrupt because uh, our cars were just too bad and we we just didn't uh, build adequate cars. So, in 1984, um, the company will get revived and it will get revived with uh, and, and uh, it will get revived as I'm, uh, I chose my own name for this, which is kind of similar to some of the suggestions. Uh, so it's kind of a mix of all the things you could say. It is going to be a uh, wait, what is it? European Sports Engineering is going to be the brand, and the car will be called. Uh, Uh, the, no, I don't want to. I don't want to call it the Genesis because that makes everybody think of Hyundai. But this is basically uh, this is what what uh, will really get this brand going, and it will be a sort of a rally car with a road going version as well. Um, because you know the investors they said, hey, you guys made some pretty pretty pretty. Uh, you had some pretty good ideas in the past, although the execution wasn't always that good. But certainly, you know how to how to build a fast car, and therefore, um, I think that is what we should go for as here as well. Now, with we we get a couple of options. We get this body that we could use. Or we got the two that I already uh, looked at, or we have this one. Oh, well, I don't really like that one though. It's too big for my own taste. We could build like, or or have um, have mid-engine cars been banned at this point from rallying? I think they have, or at least from the you know the, from the good parts of rallying, <laughs> from the interesting uh, category classes. Um, wait, isn't this exactly the same as this? Yeah, okay, um, well, whatever. Let's go with, let's go with this one. This looks sort of, uh, Nissan-ish, Datsun, whatever they were called at this point. In time, I have absolutely no idea. I, I know nothing about Japanese cars, especially of, of that era. So of course what we're gonna do is we we are gonna give this thing pop-up headlights. Do we wanna change the angle of this? Oh we can't. Obviously it being a rally car it needs wide fenders. And okay. Uh, excuse me? Monocoque. Um, what do we use? I think we use just a regular steel one and then longitudinal engine placement. We want to go off road, so uh, McPherson's are probably better. Uh, off road, low end. Low. We need good uh, rear, rear uh, suspension, though. 
Since the semi trailing arm has low off road, and so does the double wishbone, but double wishbone is basically better at anything else. We're gonna go with that. And then fiberglass panels, I would suggest, because they're light and. Well, that makes it so we have a heavy uh, monocoque underneath, and then the light panels uh, on top, basically. And that makes it so we have a very low center of gravity. So uh, what we will do is fit. Let's give this thing pop-up headlights, which are right here. Only question really is which ones. These ones, I guess. And then, because uh, it is a rally car, it needs some sort of rally intake, uh, some sort of air intake on the bonnet, some vents on the side of that as well. Um, just, just all the good stuff that we know from rally cars, you know. And as far as grills go, I'm not totally sure yet if we, like, if I want to give this thing or, or if I want to give my brand a, uh, let's just call it the rally for now. Uh, if I want to give uh, these cars a signature grill that I use in every mo model, that's yet to be decided. But in any case, I'm looking for something specific. Uh, It wasn't really this one, was it? This might this might be cool though. Then I'm gonna I'll make this a little bit longer. And I'm gonna give it some indicators on the side of course. Because even even rally cars, they need to they need to know when you're about to overtake, right? And like this is this is probably gonna and this is uh, basically gonna be the uh, the rally version of it. Like this is gonna not be road legal. This is gonna be the racing version of it. And then, of course, we're going to make a road version of it, too. Uh, I don't really know what uh, what the displacement limit was. Wait, I, I could look that up real quick. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, it has how much CC? 2,133. Okay, that is, that is the capacity limit for... Um, for turbo cars uh, door handles because somebody somebody needs to drive this even if they don't want to and let's give this thing like a massive uh, fat rear end stretch on release all across show him who's boss basically um,
You know what? Let's do it like this way. Obviously, it being a rally car, we need lips and wings and everything. So, uh, I forgot to actually add a lip on the front. Are we gonna get... I think from... Excuse me? Why is, why is this not... Why does this go all the way up, basically? Maybe I need to make it thinner so I can place it further down. Nope. That's all we get. Alright. Alrighty then. Uh, wings. We really want to kind of... No, not this one. Oh wait. Uh, no, we don't want this either. What is this? This is a new one. Let's make this large. See what it actually looks like when it's properly sized. Not bad, but not very fitting for an 80s car, I think. Uh, this is the sort of F40, Ferrari F40 style wing. Think. Yeah, I think we could go with this one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what about? <laughs> well, why not? No, I mean, this is just ridiculous at this point. Even that is already, like, kind of large for the size of this car. But that, I mean, that's bigger than the wing on a fucking uh, Plymouth Superbird. <laughs> In any case, uh, we should move on with this, I guess. Um... Get this thing one of these and the exhaust like on the outside and very big. Yeah, all right. Also, we could give this thing some headlights here. Yeah, all right. Good. It'll have to be all-wheel drive. If you want if you want to stand a chance at least. And engine. Inland 4. Because I don't think... Well, were inland 6s allowed? I don't know. In any case, we are going to go with the inland 4 anyway. I think... Yeah, well, there's only the option of uh, getting... Four bars per cylinder anyway, so uh, there is that. Now remember, uh, 2133 cc. Uh, and also remember that reliability on this engine is not a concern. So it's okay if we have valve float. Uh, 
uh, of course we want to have high cam profile cam pressure is going to be somewhere really low because we are going to fit a huge turbo with yeah, air to air intercooler because there's no large uh, watts to air for this sort of displacement apparently also we're going to have massive turbo lag probably so let's just deal with that uh, because the uh, because the RPM limit is 8500 RPM, this. Excuse me? What's going on out there? Well, I don't know. But there's somebody making noises on the outside. Uh, anyway, because, because the RPM limit uh, in this class is restricted to 8500, I. God, I can't can't go with super unleaded or anything like that. Should we go with super let no let let leaded fuel was already banned. So we have to go with regular unleaded fuel. Which kinda sucks. Um But what I was getting at is because the RPM limit is restricted to 8500 RPM, it's gonna kind of suck to to, to give this thing a lot of power because the turbo is gonna spool up so late and like it's just gonna have massive amounts of turbo lag no mufflers 300 horsepower actually already yeah the valve float is just terrible again costs are not really um, what we should be worried about what we should be worried about rather is power 345 horsepower is certainly some power okay this is not going anywhere Uh, 61, 362. Does this give us anything? No. Basically. Okay, 360 horsepower. Four parts. Okay, now I increase this by one point. Three seventy one. Three seventy two. Three seventy one. Also, fuel economy is obviously not a primary concern. Three hundred and eighty horsepower. Because I think there wasn't a power limit, was there? Yeah, actually, the the Audi, uh, the the rally version made 450 horsepower so well no there certainly wasn't a power limit we, we are actually quite underpowered here comparatively speaking how can we fix this well lots of boost i guess and how far can we go in the boost i mean let's just face it Economy is absolutely meaningless. Three hundred seventy-nine horsepower. Can you increase this by doing that? No. Actually, yes. Three eighty-four. Three eighty. Oh, there it comes to the stuff. Three 
401 horsepower. The exhaust is slightly restrictive already as well. Oh yeah. For 430 horsepower. That doesn't do anything anymore. Four forty seven is actually getting pretty close. To the four hundred and fifty that the Audi had. Um, one more. Four forty nine. Uh, increase this by one more point. 454, okay. Um, yeah, good. We're basically on par with the Audi now. There we go. The turbo will kick in before 5000 RPM. And it's just still kind of late. I can't really do anything about that. Also, mind that um, top speed is totally irrelevant. Did they have differentials back then? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they did, but probably no geared LSDs, right? Some manual lockers? I have no idea. Uh, let's let's take the off-road tires because you know rallying is to a large extent off-road. I think they had like two 15 millimeter tires. Did they? Steel rims. Vented discs up front and on the rear. No, on the rear we're gonna put some solid discs. Uh, yes. No, no on the tray. And yeah, we're gonna work on match with the downforce a little bit later. Uh, two seats. Very basic interior and base and almost nothing in it. So we're gonna put some quality on, onto this as well. No entertainment, no power steering either. Um, and you know, safety was really high for the 80s. I guess we'll go with advanced safety because that kind of makes sense. I think standard springs, then this, then this, and then the sports suspension setup, but with relatively high. Not that high, relatively high uh, ride height. Drivability is awful. <laughs> then again, like this would only go into skilled hands anyway. Brake fade, no brake fade. Uh, Carbide is 1200 kilograms. Oh yeah, they had to weigh 1200 kilograms, didn't they? So there is that. Um, I guess we'll go with a different body material then. Eleven eighty two, okay, that's better. Um, I 
Okay. A basic 8 track, but of pretty bad quality, so we're at 1200.2 kilograms. Let's see what this does. 5 seconds here to 100. It's actually not that good. Yeah, but now. Okay. Um, I think we need to change something. And that something is that. We need to. Give this thing a second front lip. So that the dog force is a little bit balanced, a little bit more balanced. Excuse me? Why is this rear still make so much more downforce than the front? Hmm, I have no idea. Do we have two lips on the front now? Or was it just... Yeah, lip limit reached, so we must have two. Um... Well, I'm not expecting this to be particularly fast around here, because this is obviously tarmac. Also, the Audi had a 6-speed manual gearbox, whereas we don't have that option here, which kind of sucks. Oh yeah, and we need to adjust the uh, power distribution. Like this, okay. That's just really not what you would like to see from a car like this around the effort track. If you go for a sports compound tires instead of the chunky off-road tires, you'll see that deceleration is already quite a lot better. And yeah, 123.0, so 4.3 seconds faster than with the off-road tires, which is expected. So is the fuel economy. But is this really... I, I'm, I think I'm doing something wrong. I don't think this is really how you'd set up a rally car. But we, we might make it, make it work nonetheless. So, hope you guys enjoyed. This episode of automation also leave me feedback on the audio quality now. Um, hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.